Hey everyone and welcome to a new video on this channel. Today we're talking about the differences between Gramostola Porteri and Gramostola Rosea. We're checking out some video material we got and filmed in Chile um, a few years ago where we were able to document Gramostola Porteri and Gramostola Rosea. So yeah, let's just start with the intro and then check out the topic. So as most of you know, there's a huge debate about whether you have a Gramostola rosea or a Gramostola porteri. So it is not really clear which species is which. So yeah, I have to tell you, it is not easy to distinguish them apart from each other. There are different color morphs, but this is not the only thing you can use to separate uh, species from each other. So we'll start with the easy one. Uh, regarding the name rosea, hence the coloration of the spider, there should be a rose tarantula somewhere in Chile where this name rosea is fitting to. And most of you guys will think about the red color of the Gramostola rosea, the red color morph I'm just showing right here, which we also documented in Chile. And uh, yeah, it, it just looks like it should be this uh, Gramostola rosea. But when you think about it, uh, Gramostola porteri also has a rose carapace at most of the time. Um, they also have a brownish coloration, but nevertheless, do not forget the rose coloration and hence the name rosea could also be from this very specimen. So it is not really clear on which species is which and yeah just going straight to the facts on how to distinguish them. So it will more likely to take another couple of years of researchers within the country of Chile to find out which species is which and what is certain at 100% is that there are more than these two species of Gramostola present in Chile. There is another one uh, from the region in Maule which uh, has a very different scopulae on their metatarsus. So this is another unique feature and it's called in the hobby Gramostola species Concepcion, I think. Um, so there are at least three species of Gramostola present in Chile. And anyway, just look at this footage. Um, Gramostola rosea inhabits the southern range of the um, capital city of Chile and there yeah, the landscape is truly unique and of course also the temperatures are not as high all year round. They have a high hot summer uh, with high temperatures but also a colder winter where the temperature drops significantly. So it is not the perfect pet tarantula um, regardless if you can get them for yeah, very low money because of the legal exports in the past couple of years. But this is another topic. Chile has stopped exporting legal tarantulas. And that's another fact which will raise the prices within the next couple of years for these uh, species from and within Chile. So just a short reminder, if you do like this video, please leave a comment down below and thumbs it up. I know I hate to do this stuff, but we need more awareness of our channel and all the information we got about tarantulas in the wild and now also showing you some tips and tricks on how to keep them successfully as pets. So make sure share it if you like it and yeah, subscribe. Thanks. So make sure if you are getting a Gramostola rosea or a Gramostola porteri, just get a couple of them, get at least a couple of slings in the hope that you're able to get the breeding group together. And then hopefully you can aim and target this for your own breeding project because there will be no legal exports um, from Chile coming soon. So the whole legal exportation in these ridiculous high numbers for extreme low prices for adult tarantula Gramostola rosea, uh, which has been done in the past, has finally stopped. So yeah, another side note, not just because something is legal, it's also morally and ethically correct because in my opinion, the legal export of 
thousands and ten thousands of adult female Gramostola rosea and portery in the past couple of yeah decades actually um, is not doing very well uh, for the nature and for the population on site in Chile. But what we can say is when we were back in Chile uh, around two years ago we found so many Gramostola rosea and Gramostola portery and we did not look in a lot of places. So basically every place we knew that Gramostola rosea is present we were able to find them and not just one but several different adult females and spiderlings and juveniles at various different life stages. So this is something really nice that we can show that also the illegal exportation has not really damaged the populations, at least the ones we have seen. So great news there. And so just keep in mind that depending on the origin of the species and where the species got collected, uh, they will tend to have a different coloration and it is not stable within one population. So this is another thing to consider. Do not think you have a rose color morph something uh, which is always keeping the colors of this reddish and deep reddish coloration. But this might change um, because it also changes within the same population. As for the husbandry of Gramostola rosea and portery, make sure you give them a lot of substrate and do not use cocoa fiber or any other substrate which is yeah, just falling apart by its own because it's not stable. Just make sure you e use some maybe uh, soil or topsoil which has a bit more strength to it so the spider can actually dig and the tunnel uh, they build does not collapse. Um, so this is something you could do. You can also add a little bit of sand to it, make it a bit more wet and then the whole structure of your soil will be a bit more stable because in the wild as you can see they build turrets and tunnels underneath rocks usually but they also build just yeah straight into the whole substrate and soil part uh, quite quite long tunnels around 30 to until 50 or 60 centimeters uh, in length so this can happen too depending on the temperature of course when they have the chance to dig underneath a huge rock which also stabilizes uh, the temperature and their microclimate around this very rock so what we saw is that if you actually keep them underneath rocks um, they will not dig down very deep that's also something we've seen in the nature so there are different variants you can keep them uh, just make sure the temperature is okay they tend to like it around 23 to 22 degrees celsius uh, within their burrow so it can be hotter outside and you can use a local um, spot to heat up the enclosure but within their burrow in the enclosure just make sure the temperature is not that high because otherwise they will tend to be more defensive um, so yeah just keep that in mind when you keep Gramostola rosea the rose hair tarantula it is not something I would consider a starter tarantula because they grow extremely slow and you tend to get a captive bred specimen and not an adult female where you don't really know where they originate from so captive bred specimens are the way to go and they tend to grow extremely extremely slow takes around four to five years to mature or even longer depending on the temperature and feeding interval uh, you give them at captivity so yeah next topic and another side note regarding the history of these two species so Gramostola rosea is an extremely old species which was described in the year of 1837 so this is almost 200 years ago and um, yeah just keep that in mind that there are no new studies on this whole species within the country of Chile. Gramostola rosea is in huge need of revision to like find the holotype and type material in general and yeah find out where they are from because the location is not specified very well and now we know that there are different species of tarantulas uh, within the genus Gramostola present around this locality given in this description. So yeah, same topic for Gramostola portery. Um, 
1936, I think it was described. So another almost 100 years or at least 90 years where we have not documented again um, Gramostola pottery based on their type material. So yeah, truly in need of Chilean arachnologists working their way on this genus Gramostola within their country. It is absolutely essential and yeah if you know someone who is uh, living in Chile and would like to know more about this tarantula genus Gramostola just forward them to this channel also raise awareness that there is a need of revising the whole taxas within the country of Chile um, tarantula wise at least so this will be a huge project um, someone could start there and if there are any help needed, just let me know and I would likely to guide them through their way somewhere. So Gramostella porteri and Rosea differs uh, on our understanding from the material we got in the Petrate that the Gramostella porteri does have a huge or, or bigger number, not a huge number, but a bigger number of uh, stridulating CETA on their palpal coxa. So this is something where how they, they stridulate with and how they make noise with for their defense mechanism. And Gramostola rosea tend to have less than Gramostola porteri. This is something you could check on when your Gramostola rosea or porteri uh, does molt and you have an exuvia, you could check it. Uh, I'll put a picture somewhere on here and leave a link. Um, it is well documented in the internet on several different web pages, but it is not science compared to the type material but these are findings the people made within the hobby uh, who distinguished or tried to distinguish uh, these variants uh, without exactly know where they were collected so this is also a huge problem normally you don't really know where the tarantula is exactly from but this is another problem when you have um, because the specimens do not get labeled very well and yeah certainly not based on their location they were collected in Chile for the legal export, all put together more or less based on their color and then exported the brown ones as Gramostola porteri and the more rose uh, reddish ones as Gramostola rosea. So you don't really know the locality of either of these species and you don't really can use this as an integrative approach with your hobby material because it's completely worthless when you don't know where the species is collected. So that's for it. And I think you hopefully got a good impression about the situation within the genus Gramostola from Chile uh, with some nice pictures and of course videos of Gramostola rosea and porteri. Also make sure you watch our videos about our field trips. Uh, we do or try to do a lot of them and document tarantulas as often as possible. So please leave a like or a comment and subscribe to the channel. That would help us a lot and help us keep motivated to put more information out there for you guys for absolute no cost and just enjoy the beauty of tarantulas with us. And of course, yeah, stay safe and healthy and hopefully see you guys soon in the next episode.